projection thing. So actually, I think I did something wrong to it, but I can still explain it. So for this, uh, for this layer, we check the properties, and we check the source. We found that the top, bottom, left, and right, uh, they all have numbers, but they don't have any units. So here's zero uh, question, question. So it doesn't have any unit. And how can we judge what kind of projection it's using? So it's, it's very similar to longitude and latitude, right? Because it's 78 something, 43 something. It's like longitude and latitude. So we can use the, the, this button to open the up to a box. This button, OK? Up to a box. And we go to the data management tool. And projections. So if we go to projections, we have two options. We can define a projection, which means this projection information is missing. So I just want to append the information to it. The other option is project, which means it's already properly uh, projected, but I want to project that onto another system. And in that case, in the previous case, we lost the projection system, so we use define projection. And then we choose the input, which is this one. And we want to project it onto its original coordinate system. Okay. Uh, here we click select, and then we go to geographic coordinate systems. We go to uh, North America. The most widely used one is NAD 1983, North American data 1983. So we double click that, and OK. We'll click OK. Then you are going to see a window here saying completed. Okay. Then if you double click this layer and choose uh, to see its properties, you're going to see degree. This is like degree. So now it has projections. After it's given projection, if we want to zoom to layer. We see them match. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to talk about, is projection system. This is very important in simulation. And some of you may create your own, co your own coordinate system. In the future, if you want to convert that to uh, GIS, it would be very difficult. So be prepared if you want to write any GIS application. just finished task one. Now this is the second task. After you collected a bunch of data, you want to organize them. And as you just saw, the shape file, one shape file contains one layer and it involves a lot of files. And when you have more layers, the folder gets bigger. So you may want to put all data in one place and organize. And actually there are other advantages, but as a single user, this is the biggest advantage. We have three options. The first option is called coverage, which is not used very often. It has been used by ArcInfo workstation, but it's not used nowadays. Now, the second one is shapefile. It's an open file format. It's widely supported, and it's portable, because you just copy the files and give it to somebody, then somebody can, then, then they will be able to use them. But the third option, is the geo database that you probably want to start using. There are different kinds of geo databases. The first one is called a personal geo database, which is an access file with MTB extension. It has a maximum uh, capacity of two kilobytes. So you can store all your layers within one access file. It's called personal geo database. The second one is called file geo database. It's no longer 
a single file is a folder, and the folder has an extension of GDB. By using this geodatabase, you are no longer limited by uh, this access file to gigabyte limit. Okay. The third option is ArcSDE geodatabase, we, as we just introduced. ArcSDE is used for enterprise level, multi-user, DBMS, which are database management systems such as Oracle SQL Server or DB2 Informix. And the fourth option is called Personal SDE Database. It's based, also based on uh, database, but it's based on a free version of SQL Server. And it's supposed only one user, but this user can have versioning and disconnected editing. And it also has a 4 gigabyte limit. And this limit is caused by SQL Server Express. So, we, in terms of task two, we finally decided to use File Geo Database. And how do we do it? We, let me do it. So, after opening ArcMap, you will see a button here that redirects you to our catalog. And in our catalog, you will be able to see every uh, data set immediately. For example, if you take a look at this uh, layer and you click preview, you can quickly see it. So it's like an album. Now, if you want to create a file geo database, you double click any folder and new and file geo database. And that's it. You create a new database and you name it as what? And anything. Okay? And then you will be able to put everything to it. For example, I drag something to it, but it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work like this. So we created a file geo database called UB2009. And we put a lot of layers into it, such as the satellite, uh, such as network, such as the network uh, satellite image, and so on. So we put many layers inside one file geo database. Now it's test three. Inspect data. So you got data and you put them all in the database. And now you want to make sure they have great quality. Okay, and you want to uh, inspect it. Now how do we do it? So as I said, I put everything onto this geo database. And I can add data. I can add this layer, that layer, and maybe this layer. After adding this layer, if we zoom to this parking lot in Troy, you are going to see these layers well match, okay? And we have a lot of background images, and we have this we have this layer. But you can hardly see them. And I want to tell you that these colors, I mean the color of the line, is randomized. randomized. So every time when you load the layer, uh, it will be different. The easiest way to change that is by double click this thing. Or actually single clicking. By single clicking on this symbol, then you will be able to change it very quickly. Okay, and you will be able to turn on or turn off a layer here. So this is the table of contents. And sometimes you accidentally close this window, and you go to view, and you will never try. To, uh, you will never discover it. Discover it. Actually, it's here. Go to windows and table of contents. Okay. Sometimes you close this, and you think it's a toolbox, and you went to tool toolbar. You are, never, you are never going to find it back. Okay? 
Now the second uh, next thing is you may want to label them or view them. Uh, let's talk about the toolbox first, maybe. Which one? This one. So when you open ArcMap, there is already a toolbar. Let me drag it here. Toolbar. The first time you see it, it's like this. So it has a lot of op options or functions to for navigating the map. And for example, this is zoom in, this is zoom out. But I want to tell you that you don't need this actually. If your but if your mouse has three buttons, and if the middle button is defined as generic button, uh, if it didn't define it as okay, but if you use any uh, like software, uh, if any driver is the generic button, then you will be able to use the middle but uh, middle button to pan to pan this map. Okay, press the middle button, you can pan this map. And if you scroll the wheel, you are going to zoom in and zoom out. So just pan, pan, and zoom in, zoom out. So you probably don't need these buttons. This button is for viewing the full, full extent. And this is very useful. This button, see this button, uh, is go back to previous extent. So when you accidentally zoom in or pan to another place, you can use this button to go to the last accent or go to the next accent. This is very useful. And you can use this button to identify, which means to select a feature and to view its attributes. Okay? Uh, uh, I want to emphasize that in this lecture, I'm going to do these things very quickly and probably only once. But you don't need to remember everything. The only thing I want you to do is to understand what I'm doing. So at any moment, if you don't understand what I'm doing, please interrupt me. If you can understand but couldn't remember, I will put these things online so you can view them in the future. Okay? Interrupt me if you don't see what I'm saying. And due to the time limit, I think it's uh, you can explore this toolbar, but I want to mention these are very important and you can use your middle button and the scroll wheel to zoom in and pan, to pan the map. Now I already mentioned that if you click here, you will be able to select a symbol. But in, if you right click on the layer, you will have more options, including the properties. So in this property dialog, you can choose symbology here, and then you will be able to use more complex symbols for your network. For example, I choose quantities, and I display the features on this layer uh, differently, no longer using a one common symbol, identical symbol. For example, I use this field called shape length. Then I display the shape lengths by five categories. Here's five, okay? And if you click this classify button, you are going to select the method you are doing the classification. And should I explain this? So let me quickly do it. So menu, here you see how the samples are classified. If you drag these bars, you are doing it manually. The second one is equal interval. You are going to see these in intervals uh, equally uh, distributed with equal distances. And quantile, which is like 50% quantile and 75% uh, quantile. And natural break. Natural breaks. By using this method, you are breaking, uh, you are deciding the putting the intervals on the samples that have biggest gap, okay, biggest gap, and geometrical interval.